Today we're going to continue talking about um, mass media and, and, and our, finish up our newspaper lab today. Um, I jumped over this part that I normally start the lab with, um, so I wanted to go back and just sort of hit this stuff um, by way of uh, sort of finishing this. And we'll do a little exercise before we turn back to, to finishing up the, the, the newspaper stuff today. Cool? So um, this is, uh, this is a, a movie from a couple years ago. Um, interestingly, when I asked you guys uh, at the start of class, I said, hey, you know, what, what, are, what are the sort of nature uh, you know, programs or things you saw as a kid that you know, inspired you. You guys had a lot of different answers. Some of you guys said Richard Attenborough things or Discovery Channel um, documentaries. But a large number of you guys said things like uh, reality television shows, right? Like Naked and Afraid or, or, or those kinds of things, right? And that that was, that was what you remember seeing um, uh, or being exposed to nature or, or the outdoors, something like that on, on, in sort of pop culture. A lot of people get their science from pop culture, right? So they get their science from things like this. So this is, this is a, a movie called Journey 2. Um, and um, this, uh, so I, I, I helped out with some of these movies. Um, and so uh, I was sort of like a scientific consultant kind of deal, right? This is a popcorn movie. This is a summer uh, Super hot outside. Go sit inside a cold movie theater and watch things blow up. Kind of movie, right? This is this is not a um, it's not a nat nature documentary, <laughs> okay? Um, but uh, and so so uh, uh, we try to incorporate some conservation ideas in here, right? Doesn't always work because it doesn't really fit with stuff. But but there are issues related to. Um, gigantism and, the, and, and, and things of that nature that happen in nature when critters disperse and arrive in, say, an offshore island, but they took liberties with stuff, and so they, they made it real crazy. So, so, we, so um, mass media are not evil, per se, but they often get the specifics wrong, and because that's where most people are, are getting their, their science from or getting their understanding of conservation or, or what have you, that can be a, a challenge. So, um, so you have to be careful what you're reading. So, so that guy uh, played Sean Anderson um, and thought he was Sean Anderson. And I had to tell him he wasn't me. Um, so oftentimes, when we start to go down these things, we're going to be doing some research in this, in this class. Um, and I'll say, hey, go to, go to the primary literature. Right? We always want to go to the, the, the foundational knowledge. Right? Is that really true or not? Not sure. Okay, let's scratch the surface and let's scratch deeper and let's scratch deeper and let's go, go down till we find the original data, the original interpretation, the original um, hypothesis, whatever it was, right? Original observation. But frequently, you guys have been raised on um, the web, and so you guys think research oftentimes means to Google something, right? And so this is a quote from a student from several years ago, but, but it, it serves the point. Um, and, and the student said, I just don't get what you mean. I was talking about, I said, oh, you know, find, find better references, find better references. And uh, she said, I, I just don't know what you mean. I, I mean, you say to use primary sources, but there are no primary sources on my topic, which is sort of like a huge red flag. That's like massive BS. That, that can't possibly be true. But anyway, but so there's no, there's no primary sources on my topic, and there's tons of stuff on the web, right? Uh, but you won't let us use the web, so I don't get it. We should be able to use the web, right, is, is the argument, right? And we've all felt this at, at, at times, right? When, when somebody like me is like, you know, use peer-reviewed literature, and you're like, oh my gosh, but can I just Google this super quickly and just get it over with, right? <clears throat> so the problem is most of our knowledge is not on the web. I'll say that again. The vast, 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 vast majority of our conservation understanding is not sitting on the web somewhere to get. <clears throat> that doesn't mean the web isn't helpful, but that means the vast majority of our knowledge isn't there. And so this is a little example of that. So, so you know, to that student, I was like, why would you think that the answer to your thing is even Googleable, right? Well, that doesn't make any sense uh, to me. So to illustrate this, this is a, a friend of uh, mine edited this, this book on, on fishes of uh, Southern California. And as a fun exercise, uh, he did this, and so I've, I've stolen his slides for this. Um, 
he went and he said, okay, here's a book. And so this, the, this, the book has been updated since then, but this is the original 2006 version of the, of the book. Um, he went through and he looked at all the references. And so this is an edited book. So this is a, a book about fish written by a bunch of experts. So um, my friend, who's the now retired, but was the chair of biology at, at Cal State Northridge, um, uh, went through and or actually went and asked a bunch of his friends, like to this table, hey, you guys, would you guys write a, a paper on, on eels for me? And would you guys write a paper on, on tuna for me? And right, so went to all his friends. And all his friends then went and did a bunch of great work, right? And so each of those chapters was a massive amount of research in and of itself. And then uh, Larry put them all together and, and made the book. And so for this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to go look at all of those references from, from the book, right? So all those things that people cited as the evidence that, for what we knew about these fish, right? The behavioral ecology study, the, the, the state survey of the fishes from the 1950s, and you know, whatever the heck it is. And so this is, this is the distribution of those references. So, so this is the, on the x-axis, this is the year of the publication of the reference that was cited. And then on the left is how many, how many uh, citations were in that bin, in that, that group, of, group of years. And so for reference, uh, th that's when 19, the 19, early 1980s when uh, spreadsheets, you know, electronic spreadsheets really started rolling out. Early 1970s is really when we get hand calculators that we could easily do, you know, statistics and, and summarizing stuff really, really quickly. Um, the, a classic book for folks that study fish, ichthyology, um, is this one uh, uh, paper from um, the late 1800s. And then, of course, we have Darwin's Origin of the Species that really sort of launches what we would call modern biology. So, that, so that's, the, that's the stuff. Um, so this is when PDFs became a thing, right? And we all think about everything. Oh, I'll get the book on. You get, many of you guys are reading your, your textbook probably this semester on, on PDFs, right? They're super useful, portable document format, great innovation, really easy to, to move between a, a PC and a Mac or print something up or, 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 or something that, that, that is not cited so that they can have a, um, a, a reader verbalize those words. You know, so great, great invention, super cool. We, we use them all, all day long, right? Um, but that was really in the 1990s. And of the papers, just in this one book, six, almost 60%, almost two thirds of the references were before the era of PDFs, right? So that question of, oh, why can't I just Google it and just get all the answers, right? Googling is, a, is an okay place to start, but it is by no way, shape, or form anything close to a complete um, exploration of a topic, right? Can get us going, can start us down the path, but simply typing stuff into a search engine isn't enough, isn't enough. Um, okay, so uh, what about other sources? What about something like Wikipedia, right? We should be able to go to Wikipedia, right? Okay, okay, so that was, that was a, a you know, comedy skit from uh, quite a long time ago, almost 15 years ago now. Um, but, but th so that was on um, Comedy Central, right? Nighttime comedy show. Um, a bunch of people watched that and then went on to Wikipedia and changed the entry, right? Yeah. So much so that Wikipedia had to eventually turn off the African elephant um, page because every time people would try to change it, it would change back. Say, oh, the population's been growing, 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 right? And so, um, so this is a re this is this is a real thing, right? This this is a real this, this, this it sounds like a, a joke and it was, but but it pointed to the challenge, right? And so we have all kinds of references on on Wikipedia for things, you know, pop culture things, technical things, etc., um, including things like like DDT. Um, increasingly, and so this was, oh, did that disappear? Oh, you guys can't see that. That's weird. Why can you not see that? Huh? Um, anyway. Uh, uh, increasingly, um, uh, folks have figured out this, and so for political campaigns, for stuff that is, they're highly polarizing and stuff of that nature, 
Um, there's people that make their whole career now just editing Wikipedia pages, right, for hired guns, right, to, to make it look like however someone wants it to look, right? And so, so obviously, that could, somebody could say something like, like Stephen Colbert said, like, oh, African elephants are massively exploding, right? And that's pretty clear to see that's not true, right? Because they're not. It would be great if they were, but they're not. What's much more insidious and which, much, which is much more common is the half-truths, is the things, you know, so not saying that, that uh, when you drop a hammer, it goes up in the air. It says, you know, when you drop a hammer, it only falls down, um, you know, 95% of the time or, or something of that nature. You know, kind of kind of half-truths or things that, that maybe at very first blush, well, maybe that, I guess, maybe, could that be? I don't know, maybe. And then another one is outright deleting the reality, deleting the, the stuff that is true so that it just looks more unknown than it actually is, whatever the, whatever the situation is. And so here's an example, um, and a lot of this stuff has to do with politics, but it also creeps deeply into science um, uh, these days. So we need to be careful. So this is an example um, of, uh, this was um, uh, Governor Palin when she was, uh, just before she was gonna run for vice president. Um, uh, in the presidential election <clears throat> in 2008. Um, this is what her website said, and then magically the website changed, um, and, uh, and, and, and a whole bunch of changes happened very close to before her announcement, before the, the official announcement that she was gonna be the Republican um, vice presidential nominee. And so the day before, one person who had this name, Young Trigg, which happens to be the name of her, one of her children, uh, spent five hours on this one page. Uh, hadn't spent that much time on there before. Spent five hours on this one page and, and changed a, a total of 60 different parts of this article, right? This is a so-called single purpose account. So this is one where somebody established, edited it, and then and didn't do anything before and didn't ever, ever do anything afterwards, right? Um, and, and it was detected by this malicious software um, that no longer works. So Wikipedia changes, so it doesn't work. But we used to be able to, to check for this kind of stuff. People have just gotten much more sophisticated about how they're, how they're um, editing things these days. But the point is, um, there's all kinds of nefarious behavior that goes on. The more something is contentious, or the more something someone has stakes in, in a particular outcome, it seems to be the more, uh, the more these entries are messed with, kind of thing, right? If it was 18th century furniture polish in, French countryside, probably not a lot of people are going to edit that, that page, right? But, but um, uh, other things get a lot of attention. And so, um, and this is, this is an illustration of that, that, you know, sometimes people add on the left, sometimes people add things, uh, you know, keep things in there, add to stuff that's not correct, but most of the problems come with people deleting or partially deleting stuff. And, and that, that goes from everything from, you know, Israeli-Palestinian contentious things to economic things to conservation things. So let's do a little exercise. Let's do a little exercise right now. So, um, so I want you guys to open your browser. Uh, you can do it on your, f so, so I, have a, I have a survey. I want you guys to, to, to use the survey, but, but what you're gonna do is, let me describe it first. So you're gonna do, um, so first, there's, I'll, uh, we have it, it's in our module right now. I'll, I'll, I'll blast it out to everybody in a second. But we have a, um, uh, a survey. So the first thing you do, you can log on, say your name, and then um, you're gonna type in two or three sentences just about what, what you, what you uh, know about DDT. Don't Google it, just from memory. If you know it, you know, there's something about DDT, something about birds, whatever the heck, right? Type that in. Next, you're gonna to go to your browser, okay? So what I want you to use is I want you to use a clean browser, meaning uh, if you have Tor, use Tor. If you, if you don't have that, if you just have Chrome or whatever, turn on your incognito mode, okay? So the idea is we wanna have as much possible, no memory of, or, or no, because um, some of our, uh, some of our browsers learn how we like to look at certain things, and so instead of getting a generic grab of what's on the web, it, they, increasingly they, they try to focus as to what we think we want to see. So do as anonymous a search as you can, 
And what I want you to do is just type in these words, DDT, eggshell, thinning, and science, and then <clears throat> see what comes up. You're going to uh, copy the first link into the survey and says, uh, it's going to say, hey, what, what website did you get? Put that website in there. And then you know, spend uh, you know, 30 seconds or so looking at that website. And does it look like it's a trustworthy source? Is, is this a source that I, if I was doing a, you know, trying to learn about uh, the conservation aspects or the, or the, the ecological impacts of DDT, I, I could, could use that. Or the management of DDT, is this a, is this a useful source? And then you're going to say, yes, it's super trustworthy. Hey, it's totally not trustworthy. It's in the middle somewhere, whatever. Cool. And then you'll go to the next one. Paste the next link in. They say. So we're going to do 10 links, and we'll see what we get. OK? So give me one second while you guys fire up your browser and stuff. Let me, um, let me share this with you guys. One thing that is clear uh, is um, so an, so will you guys tell me? Yeah, so, so what did you think? Did you find uh, good sources, bad sources, intermediate sources? What did you find? Mostly good sources, huh? What's that? Mostly, mostly um, uh, websites that were .orgs. OK, cool. I had a lot of really good ones from like EPA and Uh-huh. publication. Yeah, and right. We were pretty anti, like, <laughs> right. So, so, so um, some good stuff in there, absolutely, but also other things, right? So, if we look at, if we look at, um, uh, I mean, I guess I might not be able to see this, make this bigger. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the first website. Or, oh, sorry, I scroll down here. Okay, so this is the average, right? So, one is like super trustworthy, and five is, not trustworthy at all, like, like, you know, horrible, right? So that, that's our scale. Um, and so the closer to zero, excuse me, the closer to zero or one, the better, the farther away, the, the less ideal. And so generally speaking, the first side or so, uh, on average, right, this is an average of everybody's stuff, and people had, had different browsers and different experiences and stuff, but basically, generally speaking, is pretty strong. But then by the time we get to the third one, we're starting to see some, some pretty significant dips, right? And by the time we get a little bit farther, we're into the twos, the threes, right? Threes, fours, right? And that's just the first splash screen, right? On our, on our browser. So, um, so good stuff, but you have to be really uh, uh, discerning. And so, so uh, just like you guys were saying, yeah, there's some good stuff, but then all of a sudden this other stuff creeps in, right? This other stuff like, this other stuff like, uh, the myth that DDT causes eggshell thinning. What? You know, myth, dude. That's hard reality, right? That's that that's scientific evidence. Um, uh, or or um, or this one, Reason Magazine. Which Reason? You know, it sounds good. Reason, right? Oh, what happened to this? Reason, right? Reason, reason is is good. Reason is stuff. Um, but if you were to you know go through this page. You know, uh, there's some talk about how, well, you know, all the references, or many of the references are before 1980 or, or before 1985 or something of that nature, right? And the reality is it's, it's because it seems to have been a super obvious pattern and very clear and very, very conspicuous in terms of the, the statistics and the, and the effects. So I suppose we could constantly be, be repeating experiments all day long, but it, it, it's sort of put to bed, right? Um, but yet, uh, this, is a, this is a common tactic, which is, hey, do we really know what we know? And of course, it's helpful to always, to always make sure we're questioning, right? It's healthy to have some skepticism. You should all have skepticism about the stuff I say, everybody says. But clearly, in a lot of these conservation issues, that's weaponized, right? So it's not just honest, uh, hey, do we, do we, well, let's take this with a grain of salt. It's, oh, well, you, you really can't trust that. Um, when I asked you guys uh, what made something um, trustworthy, this was this is just a quick word cloud, but but um, so what I've seen here, I see talks of effects, I see talks about published things here and and uh, and references, um, uh, trustworthiness, uh, that kind of stuff. So those are those are keys. So so when you look at some random web page, tell me how do you guys or, or whatever. 
how, how, why do you why do you trust it or not trust it when we get some some source that you you Googled? Okay, so so if it if it seems to have clear uh, a clear agenda, uh, maybe we wouldn't trust it. Okay, cool. Okay, so, so where is the support for the evidence? So, so here's an assertion or claim. Where is, the, where is the support for that that's really actually happening or that's how it normally happens, right? So references are key. Good. Anything else or other, other things you guys use? Uh, if it's published by like a, a credible school. Okay, so a reputable source. So something we've heard of. New York Times or, or an academic journal that has peer review, something of that nature. Um, if it's some totally random blah, blah, blah site, maybe we're, we're a bit more skeptical of. Like uh, websites like .edu or .gov, like you're more reliable than some of those sources. Okay, so, so, so uh, public agencies or universities, um, more, more reputable. Um, not perfect by any means, but, but, more, but a, a clue to more, a, a higher level of trust sort of from the get-go. Or, 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 the, or the, you're, you're assuming that's a higher level of trust from the get-go. Okay, cool. I'd be wary of like any biases that might come about, whether it is like scientific. About this, uh, this website here. What do you think about this guy? Yeah. If it has paid ads, I would not be likely to trust it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so, so, so ads, ads can be, uh, everybody seems to have ads these days, unfortunately. New York yeah. Times has ads, and, and, and Los Angeles Times has ads and stuff. So uh, generally speaking, government websites, generally speaking, don't. But, but most other, oftentimes, websites have stuff. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's do this one. Okay, so here you go. <clears throat> so here's a, here's a website. And uh, so 100 things we should know about DDT and all this and that. Um, have some background here, historical background. Uh, 1955, blah, 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 chemicals, blah, blah. Uh, reference African, African News, references of uh, w, w. Norton and Company, um, Journal of American Mosquito Control, 1988. So does this look like a reputable source? Oops. Where'd that guy go? Where'd my thing go? Okay, so so uh, Caleb said uh, maybe it may, maybe looks okay, um, but but there's some there's some weird uh, 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 opinionated stuff around here, so that makes him skeptical. Any anybody else? What do you guys think? Good, bad? Okay. Okay, cool. Good question. So let's, let's have a look at this, whatever page it is clicked or part of the thing. So this is a, a federal registry. So this is the, the you know, um, government publication. Uh, Oregonian is a newspaper. Uh, Santa Ana Register, another newspaper. Um, Journal of the American Medical, Associ Medical Association, October 1956. Um, what else? California Health or... or yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's a journal. I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, public health statement from the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. So what do you guys think? So, so, so Caleb's saying that so the, 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 his concern is this, this uh, the way things are being framed that there's this sort of intro thing that seems to be uh, opinionated, right? And, and, and sort of coming out the gate for, with uh, a take on stuff. Okay, all right, cool. So um, good, let's, let's jump back here and take a look at this. So, um, Yeah, so this, this is that website we're just looking at, right? This is another one of those ones that, that doesn't show up in the first, the first website, but it, it's in 
the top, uh, top several of, of uh, many folks when you get it. So the things you guys talked about, okay, so it's not a, it's not a dot .go, .gov or .edu, right? But it's got references, right? And it, and it has talk, it talks about stuff. So, so all those things are great first steps. Does it have references? It, does it seem particularly opinionated? But that is not enough. Let me say that again. Everybody look at me. That's not enough. Because someone says something and then throws a reference up there, that doesn't mean they're properly quoting the reference. That doesn't mean they're properly, um, uh, or maybe they're, maybe they're doing a, a quote from that reference, but they're leaving out a huge other bit of it. Remember we talked about omission is the most common thing, right? So, so yes, that reference said that, but maybe the reference also said that, um, uh, you know, DDT wasn't as bad as people said it was, However, it's killing a million birds a year or something of that nature, right? And, but they just say it wasn't as bad as we said it was, right? So in, the, in this particular case, uh, this, this website is, um, is, is, was put together by this gentleman who is, um, I would say, not an honest actor, not someone who's interested in having a debate or having an, an, an informed discussion about DDT and conservation, that kind of stuff. So um, we've known about eggshell thinning for, since I've been alive, basically. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite a clear link. So this is one of the, the, the classic papers, 1971. Um, we have a massive legacy. The greatest concentration of DDT in the natural environment is here in Southern California, just off of Los Angeles. It's there because one of the largest manufacturers, uh, a chemical synthesizing plant was in uh, this part of Los Angeles. And at the end of the day, when they were done making their DDT for the day, they would literally just wash down the equipment and the, the slurry with the, with the DDT in it would go into the drain, the drain would go into the street, the street would go into the storm drain, storm drain would go into the ocean. So right off of White's Point here, right off of the Palos Verdes Peninsula, we have these massive amounts of uh, a, a DDT in the sediment. And that's a huge problem, right? And so, um, so, so the levels are, are problematic. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Um, but that's not what's discussed here, right? That, that, that's, that, that's not, we're not looking at the whole entirety of the issue when people criticize a lot of our conservation issues, they'll pick one particular dimension, one small dimension, one subset, and they'll, they'll harp on that, that one particular thing. So in this case, this guy is, um, well, there's lots of words we could use for this person, but um, they're mostly not nice. Um, so this person is a bad actor. This person is not about trying to engage in objective exploration of truth and, 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 and strong debate. He is a shill for various companies, right? And people like him exist to, uh, to confuse you, to actively sow confusion, not to, not to have debate, not to have some, hey, you know, we're not sure if we should go this way or that way, but to actively make you go in the reverse direction. And so here's a few, few examples of the kind of things this guy says, 1999, when this when this one guy uh, passed away, this one climate change researcher, he said, scratch one junk scientist who wasted billions of dollars, right? Um, which is a pretty a-hole thing to say when someone passes away. Uh, the Center for Disease Control in, in 2000 on Fox, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention uh, investigated and reported on 108 so-called cancer clusters between 61 and 90. CDC could not link any of the clusters with environmental clause, uh, causes. Absolute lie. Straight up lie. Uh, there is no scientific way explaining how humans developed. Also, not true at all. Um, it's called evolution. Uh, the, the Earth has, uh, and then in uh, 2018, the Earth has supported abundant life many times in the geological past when there are much higher levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's quite likely that future generations will benefit from the enrichment of Earth's atmosphere with more carbon dioxide, right? This was to the... Um, the uh, uh, American Museum of Natural History in response to some silliness they did and a bunch of scientists wrote and said, hey man, you, you should really make sure these, these exhibits are objective. 
and, and this, was, this was in the letter objecting that, saying that basically it's a good thing that we have, we should put more carbon dioxide in the air. How dare you criticize putting carbon dioxide in the air? And then uh, in also 2018, I, I do have a bias in talking in an interview with New Yorker. I do have a bias. I'm all for the coal industry, the fossil fuel industry. Wealth is what makes people happy, not pristine air, which you'll never get, right? So this is the level of um, foolishness and active, active deceit that's out there. But yet when you, when you look on that website, right, the first pass, well, there's some references, right? There's some references and it kind of looks like this. So the point is, first, you guys use your BS detector, use your baloney detectors, totally. But just using those baloney detectors as the first pass isn't enough. People like this have figured out how you guys think. And, and let me be very, very clear. There's a lot of energy that's gone on to engineering your behavior, your specifically young folks' behavior, and how you interact with information on the web. And so it is by absolutely no question, 100% designed to, to control how you think stuff, to short circuit some of your normal baloney detectors, right? So throw in some references here. Many of the references that he cites actually on his website actually say DDT is a bad thing. We should not be putting DDT in the environment, but he doesn't say that, right? So you have to do, the, the more important the issue is, the more controversial the issue is, the more impactful it might be, you need to go beyond the first web page and you need to go beyond the, 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 you know, just the words on that page. So double check them, right? Grab three or four of those references and go find those references and skim them really quick. Is that really what that says, right? These guys are gambling and, and, and betting on the fact that you won't do that. The fact that you see things that appear to be kind of reasoned, things that appear to have references, that kind of stuff, and then they'll assume you're not going to go any deeper, and most people don't go deeper. So, Eddie. Are there any uh, consequences for those people who like, rely about scientific... So the question is, are there any consequences? Uh, like you can't be sued, or like you can't... Uh, this guy hasn't been sued. So, I mean, presumably, presumably uh, there, there should be, right? But um, free speech is what they would say, right? So, um, so again, it's, it's, it's many of these issues we're going to talk about, we don't know the exact path forward, right? And so we should have debate. And I'm not saying, you know, be an absolutist and, and never trust anything. I want you to be skeptical. But increasingly, one of the main tools that are deployed against conservation efforts is to confuse you. Confuse you, make you think you don't know what you know, right? I haven't read everybody's response, but I bet almost everybody here got the general gist of DDT correct when I first asked, right? Maybe you don't know the exact chemistry, maybe you don't remember, remember the exact dates, but basically it was this compound that we used to try to kill some insects, thought it was a good thing, turned out it persisted in the environment and screwed up with the, 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 the thickness of, of birds' eggs so that when mom sat on the egg, it, it cracked and it crushed and the babies died, right? And then we had fewer birds. There's a lot more complexity to that story, but that's the main nut, right? That's not talked about in these websites. That, that, that's not the story. They want to talk, well, let me tell you about the confusion. Let me tell you what we don't understand. Let me tell you about this and that. Increasingly, they'll, they'll use arguments. So now a lot of you guys believe in social justice and are interested in environmental justice and this kind of stuff. So they'll throw those arguments out at you, right? They'll say, ha! Oh, Oh, these poor folks in Africa, they need DDT, otherwise they're going to get malaria or something, right? Not talking about the fact that this DDT also causes problems with their health and this and that, right? But, but they'll use all of these hooks to make you think, well, maybe, hmm, I, hmm, I'm not sure, right? So for all the stuff in our class and for all the stuff going forward, when we're, we're dealing with these issues, right? You have to be the responsible one. You have to be the one that, that has scratched beyond the surface and have your evidence, have your support. Whether it's for a, a, a paper we're doing in here, whether it's Thanksgiving with your crazy uncle uh, and you're talking about stuff, whether it's some ballot initiative you'll vote on five years from now, whatever, right? Make sure you, you have the evidence to support that. Um, and that's a fantastic practice to get, to get used to. 
Um, okay, so, so, and now we have our, and so that, that was a little bit about some Googling stuff. Now we're gonna uh, finish up our, uh, our Los Angeles Times survey stuff. Cool. And any, any other quick questions about that or any other reactions or thoughts about the, the DDT Googling stuff? There. Okay, so the question is, what, what, what do folks that are actively trying to, to trick us or actively saying coal is good or DDT is good or whatever? Uh, this gentleman makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, if not more, um, uh, being paid by um, entities that benefit from DDT in this case. So chemical manufacturing uh, groups um, and increasingly folks have, uh, uh, that, that are interested in, in spreading falsehoods are um, are sort of part of a, a increasingly amorphous group. So it used to be very clear. It used to be the, so this guy used to work for the tobacco companies, right? And all these techniques were first developed in the, or, well, not first developed, but really perfected for the first time in the 60s when um, people started saying, oh my God, can smoking causes cancer. And then all this stuff came out against it. And so they were getting paid from the tobacco companies originally. They figured out how to do this, and then when we started having pollution regulation, they started being hired by the polluters. And so, so they're, they're making bank. Um, and, that, and that's still generally the case, but increasingly in the last uh, 10, 15 years or so, there's this weird cancer that has grown up that is this sort of just anti-science, like period, anti-science. And so, Increasingly, these folks are not supported necessarily by, by a you know evil corporation that's behind them or something like that, but increasingly social media. So th so they can they'll, so they'll put up a video that's super salacious and super doesn't make sense, but it'll get clicks and they get paid. So increasingly, they're getting support from this amorphous conspiracy kind of uh, uh, the you know. What, I don't know what we call it, the, the you know, QAnon and you know, all that kind of stuff. And so with social media, that's a new revenue stream where they can, they can just get paid for being crazy. 